much to the chagrin of our 13 YouTube followers, we are back with <laughs> another Between Two Clutches here in 2021. Um, this actually is being shot during SEMA week. Um, so we're going to try to do a couple of these with some folks that uh, we've been working with. And hopefully you guys will be excited to see. So today we are honored to uh, speak with Josh from Trans Am Worldwide. We got those guys on board here a couple months ago, and, and Josh and I actually knew each other from a little while back, so, uh, well, we'll see. He may hang up on us here. I don't know, but uh, you, <laughs> you there, Josh? You still got us? I'm, I'm here, Jeff. I never hang up on you, buddy. <laughs> you totally <laughs> should. You probably should have hung up before we even started, but that's cool. So, uh, so yeah, man, give us, uh, give us a little shot there. Looks like you're outside in the sun sunlight there. Yeah, you know, luck luckily, we're based out of Florida here, so, well, North Florida, but we don't have any blistering cold yet, although you tell some of the locals that, and they think I'm crazy. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're, we're here in Tallahassee. Uh, we've been in this building uh, for about five or six years now. Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, trying to survive here in this crazy COVID circumstances. And unfortunately, we didn't make it to SEMA this year because of that. Um, but yeah, elsewise, everything's great. Working on some projects inside. How about yourself? Yeah, man. I mean, we kind of like you, you know, we've been very fortunate. We've stayed busy. Um, I, uh, I hiked up my skirt in June and, and decided we, uh, we were not going to do SEMA just because I wasn't entirely sure it was going to happen. And uh, God love you, SEMA, but I think you're going to need a year to get that new convention center layout worked out. Um, but yeah. I, was, uh, I was surprised to learn, too. Like, I know Holly didn't end up going. I don't think Summit Racing ended up going. There were some big names that kind of, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, the Trans Am Depot and Trans Am Worldwide have actually been going to SEMA for 20 years straight. So this is the first year we've missed since the induction of SEMA. Uh, almost since the induction of SEMA. So it's kind of a big deal for us too, but unfortunately, like I said, it's not so much our fault. Uh, there's a lot of vendors that have been on board with us uh, for over a year now for the 2021 SEMA schedule uh, that unfortunately weren't able to deliver products, uh, you know, as part of their sponsor deal. And we just weren't able to swing around, not to mention the body side of things, uh, you know, waiting on molds and stuff for, for the new project. You know, unfortunately, I can't talk in too much detail about, but I heard nothing. Yeah, it's, been, it's been rough, but, you know, we've been luckily getting along still and, and, and able to stay open in, in the free state of Florida. So we've been extremely lucky still. Yeah. I, and I think, too, I think this will this will be an interesting SEMA to kind of figure out what works. Like I said, the new layout will, of, of course, present some opportunities and some challenges, too. So we'll all we can do is focus to head back there. And I, I mean, shoot. Back in the early days, we were knocking apart our displays for rebuilds and trying to help people out because we, we like everybody else, we hit a drought kind of early on. But yeah. I think, you know, we were even joking before. Now we're at the point where, shoot, we're dropping within about a week, week and a half for a lot of our customers. So that's working out really yeah. well. But yeah, man, show us uh, show us the front of this building. Show us what's going on inside, man. This is good yeah, stuff. Yeah, we'll walk in. we got some traffic going by here. Yeah, don't get don't get run over on my watch. That, that would be tough to... Tough to edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's about a uh, 17,000 square foot building, uh, you know, full glass plane front. This actually, the building actually started life uh, as a, it was going to be a, a business that was going to store, you know, high end cars for, for customers and maintain them. Uh, and then we purchased it about four or five years ago. Uh, so this is a little waiting area when we walk in here. Uh, oh. This is our performance side. So this is where I am. Uh, three lifts, you know, air conditioned, full glass pane front. Wow. I'm, I'm spoiled rotten. I'm a spoiled rotten little baby. Nah, right here, look at this little, little manic piece right here. Look at that. <laughs> hey, isn't that some nice product placement? <laughs> yeah. So th oh, this is the shop car that we've been talking about a little bit. Uh, you know, so this is a, a 2015 C7, uh, obviously utilizing one of your triple disc clutch uh, with the uh, center disc. Actually, uh, this is going to be quite a special project. It's going to utilize these two uh, twin 72, 75 turbo chargers from Comp Turbo. Oh, and yeah. then it's actually going to have a sequential transmission as well, a uh, five-speed oh, sequential trans. That's right. I forgot about that. Now, you guys went with uh, – whose sequential are you using? Samsonus or is it 66D? I mean, at this point, I'd hate to give them a plug, but <laughs> – <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but, <I> guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did we – did, we end up uh, – we're going to use a Samsonus uh, RS90. So that's actually going to be the first Corvette in the world to, to utilize the RS90 transmission. Uh, that's it actually is capable of handling over 2,500 foot pounds of torque out of the box. And that's on, uh, that's, uh, those things are built pretty nice. You know, they're O ring cases. Uh, they're made to be worked on at the track. You know, like I said, it's a five speed width of reverse. And then 
it's going to have a, you know, a transition gear set, you know, so that way you can swap those out quickly, go from like a street mode to a more aggressive track mode with just a matter of pulling off a rear cover, swapping out two gears. And oh, then you wow. go from having you know, something so streetable to something extremely uh, track friendly. Kind of like, but yeah, let me show you around some more. Don't mind the big truck in the background. That's the boss man's new hauler. He's just getting some new tires. Oh, it's all good, man. It's all good. Yep. So this is uh, one of our banded editions. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So we built 77 of these uh all of which are autographed by burt reynolds uh started back in 2009 once uh you know as soon as the fifth gen hit the market well as you'll notice all of these cars are actually based off of camaros much like how the trans ams were in the back in the day uh you know the trans am was just a different body camaro platform uh so we built 77 of these uh this one is actually an automatic i'm sorry jeff <laughs> i'm good i used to have feelings but i just left them in the other warehouse it's okay <laughs> so this is a 454 cubic inch lsx and this actually has uh twin uh 6872 comp turbos wow. uh on, e on e85 it makes about 1100 wheel horsepower wow and like i said this is a, a 6l90 car so it's a pretty cool combo like i said don't mind the, the new toy hauler here and i'll give you a little bit of sneak peek at the back we're, we'll, we're going to edit all that truck stuff out of there. Don't worry. I'm sure you would. And yeah, I'll send you some more clips as well. So oh, you see, yeah. it really opens up back here. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty big spot. You can wow, see a couple more. Nice shop. Wow. We got a cool uh, mezzanine that we stole all, store all of our parts in and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Which, this uh, mezzanine is actually really good use of space for all the uh, budding architects out there. Yeah, you know, I mean, we have all the space here. We'd be surprised at how limited it gets, especially, uh, you know, I, we're at, so we're at the end of a run here. Uh, so this is the cars that we're currently building. Cool. Uh, so these are based off of the 6th Gen Camaro. So this is one of our 50th anniversaries. And then this is right next to one of our Super Duties. So these are the body styles. You can see how they're very similar. Obviously, small differences between the two. Uh, but we built 55 of these. Um, and like I said, we're right at the end of this run. So when I first came here about two years ago, uh, there was Camaros as far as the eye could see. So we're pretty empty right now compared to what we usually are. Wow. Um, so there's another earlier model, fifth gen unit. Some good looking buggies, dude. And listen, and back here, I'm a Mopar guy, so I really don't like any of that stuff. But that's good looking stuff. I can't lie. You're a Mopar guy. Yeah, I know. I fooled you because my sleeves are still attached. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I was trying to come up with something like that. You beat me. <laughs> the mullet's a little shorter. I let, and these are actual sewn on sleeves. They're not the Velcro ones that I could, you know, which arguably, you know, a man that's dealing with some T tops, there's some jokes to be had there too, but I'll let it slide so you don't punch me. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so it's cool as you switch to that. So, yeah, as you can see, uh, the T top is obviously an option. It's an expensive one at that. Uh, but as far as the body components go, uh, the front fenders, the front fascia, the hood, uh, obviously the T-top conversion that you see here and then, you know, the rear fascia and the rear deck lid are all made out of carbon fiber. That's actually molded right in house. So we start life. It starts life with just, you know, the fabric carbon fiber. We lay it in our molds, you know, bake it. And then from there, trim it, dry fit it, body work it. Uh, and then, you know, go through the process of paint and body. So each one of these cars has an estimated about 900 man hours of labor, uh, you know, mostly in all the body work. I, I see the car for about 60 hours between building and tuning. You know, our super duties here, like this one, is a 455 cubic inch LT1. And then they're supercharged uh, by Magnuson with their new 2650 kit. Uh, so we offer some that make about 900 wheel horsepower. And then our drag pack makes about 1,050 to 1,100 wheel horsepower. Hey, the, uh, is the Magnuson, um, it's liquid cooled, correct? Or is it just yeah, yep. here? No, they're, they're water cooled. Uh, you know, much like, uh, I don't even know why you know, Magnuson even offers an air to air. I have no idea why if that's just like an alcohol race package thing, but yeah, you know, all the superchargers we use are all uh, air to water intercooled. It just seems so, like yeah. it kind of makes sense to me. And like I said, I'm, yeah, I'm the clutch guy, but I like to learn at least a little bit here and there about, you know, the other parts of the cars, but yeah, not super cool. No, no. Yeah. I mean, over, you know, over the last 10 years, uh, even the last 10 years or even the last five, six years, uh, there's been so many developments made in the, in the aftermarket performance world, you know, uh, the, the, the age of the American muscle car is very much back alive and kicking and if not stronger than it's ever been, yeah. uh, even through all the bull crap, you know, with EPA trying to cut down and, and whatever else, uh, you know, there's so many aftermarket parts available out there. So many great vendors to work with much like yourselves, uh, that, you know, even though these cars carry a crazy horsepower number like that, 
they're still ext- extremely streetable. Uh, you know, you can put the air conditioning on, you can start the thing at six o'clock in the morning and drive it to work uh, without even waking up your neighbors. And, you know, if you go grab that, that gas pedal, uh, you know, you could snap your passenger's neck real quick. Just waiting for you. <laughs> Just waiting for you. And, and yeah. then, you know, you know, you, uh, you, uh, you youngins, you whippersnappers are very fortunate in that, you know, when I, my formative years, you know, uh, <clears throat> we'll go for the middle eighties. We'll just leave it at that. You know, we they just, made horsepower in the middle eighties. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if you're, if you're downhill with a tailwind, um, <laughs> you know, all we, what we had to look, look forward to was restoring the older cars because the newer stuff just didn't really, it didn't, wasn't doing it. But then, you know, the middle nineties kind of came around and we start getting some kind of start getting some things. And then kind of, like you said, you know, nowadays you've got, you've got something for whatever your flavor is. GM's making good stuff. Ford's making good stuff. Chrysler's making some good stuff, although it's a bit heavy, too heavy. It's it's heavy, but but there's an argument to be made that Chrysler's making the best platforms. I mean, you know, they did a great job with those, with that Hellcat platform that, you know, that iron, uh, that iron va with the supercharger and i think they're putting that in everything they got now i think they might even put that thing in a minivan eventually i don't know oh yeah <laughs> I, i'm waiting i'm waiting for it they did a well, they did a 392 in a jeep and i think yeah. there's a there's a hellcat plan for that um, oh they already got the jeep yeah they got the track hawk out already in the grand yeah, yeah, yeah. platform well i saw they did a wrangler with the 392 um mm. i haven't seen a, i haven't seen a hellcat motor in a Wrangler yet, but I'm sure, you know, what next no, I know, I know shops like, uh, I think Hennessy has done, uh, that pickup version. What are they? Is that the gladiator? Oh, the gladiator. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've done, they've done some Hellcat swaps into those, but yeah, I think so far it's just on the aftermarket world. Not so much from the factory. Although I think after Dodge sees that they might get the sniffing around it. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the, you know, it's, it's great for us because I got, one clutch kit that fits like 400 years of the challenger because it's never changed exactly and it's everything yeah, I don't think you got a 57 car cool you got a hellcat cool we can just throw the same yeah it's just not same crankshaft <laughs> yeah it's the same shit so um but yeah I, I think we really are we're in a we're in a neat time especially being you know kind of being a car guy you know you've got a lot of great domestic options to choose from um you know i'm i'm always looking to expand we had uh we had a pretty big pretty big string of requests for the EcoBoost stuff of all things. Oh yeah. So we're kind of running with that. So I got a good EcoBoost, which again, it's nice there because it's the same trans as the GT. So I just, just let's do another flywheel and I'll just roll with it. So yeah, they're all, 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 all companies have great platforms uh, in their stock, in their stock trim and then great platforms to modify as well. And uh, yeah. like I spoke about a little bit earlier, uh, the availability of the aftermarket in the aftermarket world now for really all those platforms, EcoBoost, you know, LS, LT, the Hemi stuff, you know, that that weird Coyote stuff, whatever you want to call it, you know, they all have great support. Uh, <laughs> they all have great support right now in the aftermarket world. So yeah, it's an uh, exciting time to be alive, uh, an exciting time to be a car guy. Uh, even through all the BS, you know, there's still people out there that that love to spend their money on cars and, and love to go yeah. fast, you know, much like us. So. It keeps us enthusiasts happy. Yeah. And I think, you know, the good thing too is the aftermarket has always been an industry that will evolve in ways it needs to, like with the methanol injection, like with playing nice with the EPA and and figuring that stuff out. So I think, I think we're in a great position to kind of even further that along because God knows the electric stuff is coming, you know, hot and heavy too. We actually did. um, They're bringing the heat. There's no doubt in it. So we did, we had a clutch in Ford's original Mach-E, the actual Mustang that had an electric motor and a manual transmission, which was, wow. was killer. I was promised to drive in the car, but it ain't happened yet. Um, <laughs> not that I'm bitter, um, but that, I think stuff like that is, is that kind of thinking is going to, I think that's going to be a side of our industry that carries us forward too, because man, you get the best of all worlds right there if you can do it. Yeah. And I think they yeah, do no, halfway decent. Yeah, there's no doubt it has a presence, you know, and, and Tesla itself is, is making its presence more felt. Uh, and then, you know, I think more so than the other companies, you know, obviously with their with their great deal of performance. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think we will turn the page a little bit to that. But I don't think we're going to see the end of the, you know, loud V8 chug-a-lug-in 
uh, anytime soon. I think the echo of the of the gas car or the, the petrol powered vehicle is gonna is gonna last a long time because I mean probably just like you, uh, you know, there's there's nothing that can replace that feeling for us for us enthusiasts. Yeah, it's just the, the bond between man and the machine. <laughs> and and that's the thing, like you know, skeptics will call me up. I've actually I've had people call me up. Well, why are you still making clutches? Because people are still buying them. Yes, but <laughs> um, I, I need uh, I need Ford's GT500 to get the rumored manual. Let's get that going, boys. Uh, the CA yeah. needs to get a manual, and I I kind of understand some of their thinking, but come come on, guys, you copied a Ferrari 430, put the six speed in it. Yeah. They had them for a while too, so um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, you know, like we're looking to expand. There's a big BMW market out there. There's a big Porsche market out there. Um, that's mm. I'm hoping to actually dedicate the four brain cells I have left to to getting that <laughs> one for you this year because I've talked about I probably talked about it in a previous between two clutches and I'll get called a liar in the comment section, which is fine. It is what it is. It's you know, <laughs> like said, but anyway. Well, hey, Josh, I appreciate you doing this a ton. Um, like I said, we'll, uh, we'll maybe even check back in with you as things progress. Um, what, um, when do you guys think you're going to have the vet ready to rock and roll? Maybe we'll do another quick one of these to kind of update and see what people think. No. Yeah. I'd love to. I, I was promised a sequential before Thanksgiving. So the countdown's on, <laughs> uh, that, that being said, when it shows up, uh, it's not like it's going to be running the next day. There's, you know, uh, that system is going to be a couple hundred hours probably between, you know, fabrication and wiring and then dialing and everything so uh it's i'm hoping to make a launch with it early uh early next year uh Oop. maybe try to get it out the track uh you know uh so key points i just, I just wanted to hit on uh, for you guys is, is uh you know as, as i'm building that insane car as, as all these insane cars uh that we build in here you know the crazy power numbers you know we walk a fine line between crazy performance and streetability uh you know that's something that manic delivers on uh as far as the transition of the power to the ground you know, uh, a triple disc clutch capable of handling, you know, 1300 foot pounds of torque. You would think that your left leg would get tired, uh, trying to keep the thing off of it. Uh, but you know, those, uh, probably only about a 10% increase over a factory foot pedal. And then you're not getting any chattering or anything. Uh, even when you're slipping it in traffic, uh, you know, you, you guys are able to maintain, uh, both performance and, and drivability at the same time, which is something that a lot of other companies can't talk about. So, uh, you know, we're trying to work with you guys. And, uh, and, and moving forward and, uh, you know, back to what you were saying about the, the, the ship times, uh, you know, some of your competitors are even before COVID were four to six to eight weeks, uh, from order time to delivery. Uh, and for you guys, I think we ordered that clutch like two and a half weeks ago and it showed up and like, what the hell is this thing doing here already? <laughs> so, so I think the email impressive. read, Hey dude, take it back. What? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I had no room on the shelf. I was anticipating another month. And now, uh, so yeah, keep, keep kicking ass and keep doing what you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, we're happy to be a part of the, the Manic family. And, and yeah, anytime you guys want to reach out for an update, uh, feel free. You know, we're always happy to talk to, to vendors that are, that are doing real well in the industry and helping us out a lot. Well, cool deal, man. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Like I said, appreciate you making some time to do this. And I, I guess we'll have to. Let's set a date at the Heart Bar for next SEMA. That's usually my hangout. Uh, I usually do play my ear. I, I do a little uh, a, a little customer appreciation happy hour. That's happy for everybody except the guy paying for it. So I try to make sure I drink a lot that night. That sounds good to me, man. I'll bring the cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, yeah, Josh. If you're ever heading south, man, if you want to stop through on the way, don't be afraid to reach out. We're right off of I-10, so we're easy to get to. Yeah, you know what? I've actually got the I got some family in Tampa I need to see, and I got another couple. I've got a customer out on the Panhandle, so I could probably kind of swing back through, um, which I would. Yeah, yeah, doing, actually. Yeah, so if you're heading south, they'll probably bring you down to Jacksonville, then south. You know, it's kind of even from here. We you know, we'll head over to Jacksonville, so Jacksonville is about a two hour and twenty minute drive from here. So okay. it'd be a little detour for me, but yeah, we're right. We're like ten minutes off I ten. Uh, so you can Ooh. swing on down, even if it's the weekend, give me a shout. You know, I live close enough to the shop. I'll come down and, and give you guys a tour and we can meet and uh, hang out, have some dinner for the night or whatever. I'm, I'm open to anything. Ah, uh, right on, man. Well, much appreciated. Well, Hey, again, we'll, we'll probably chime back in and we'll do this here soon. And, uh, yeah, dude, really appreciate you making some time for us. No problem, Jeff. We'll talk soon, buddy.